All right, this mic is called Religion Dystopia. No one versus belief. We're going to start to get back into John now. We're going to chapter 15. Uh, Lord God Almighty, all praise and glory go to you, the Lord of all spirits. Thank you for everything you've done for me, for uh, uh, this world. God, I ask you to please protect uh, uh, the home I live in, the neighborhood, my neighbors, my community, the children, my son. Bless them all a million times more than ever bless me, God. All praise and glory go to you, God. And bless anybody that may hear this, the one or two of them that may hear this, that they will be edified. But more importantly, God, they will be a blessing to you. Lord God, Jehovah, Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the Amiel, the Amiel. The Amen. The Great Amen. The beginning and the the ending. The first and the last. God grant me patience and strength to deal with those that uh, would not offer that same thing to me. And they are in abundance. Or are they? Whew. Anyways, Paul, praise and glory to you, God. I am the true vine. That is Jesus. I go back to chapter 14 for a bit to see this whole thing. When where Jesus, uh, Judas said unto him, Not as scary as Lord, how is it that thou wilt? Manifest thyself unto thee and not unto the world. Remember that. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and he will come unto him and make our abode in with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not of not mine but the fathers which sent me these things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit holy 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 whom the Father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now he's talking specifically to his apostles. Peace I leave with you, my apostles. My peace I give unto you, my apostles. That are right in front of my face. Allegedly 2,000 years ago. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let it be be afraid. Isn't that interesting? His peace that he will give unto you is not as the world giveth. That's something worth meditating upon. Thinking about how the world offers up the uh, treaties and ceasefires and supposed peace treaties and all that stuff and peace. Nope. That's something to think about, and it goes back to the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost, and how that they would be comforted, and how they would have peace in the midst of a den of wolves, of vipers, serpents, and scorpions. All figurative terms Jesus used to describe the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the um, scribes, the elders, and... Um, the Jewish cult that surrounded them. The synagogue of Satan, as Jesus called it. He said it made very clear that their father was of Satan. Was Satan. <clears throat> Ye have heard how I say unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that 
when it is come to pass ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of the world cometh, and hath nothing in me. Maybe the prince of the world is that of Satan. In which case, Christ and Heavenly Father are allowing it to happen. But the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise and let's go hence. There's a lot to unpackage there, but we're going to keep reading it and have something for you and I in the future to meditate on. Chapter 15. I am the true vine, my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot break or bear, excuse me, fruit of itself, except it abide, abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. So the husband is Heavenly Father, the vine is Jesus, and the branches are who? His apostles. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into a fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye, my apostles, will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy may might remain in you, that your joy be fulfilled. This is my commandment, that ye, my disciples and apostles, love one another, as I have loved you. <clears throat> Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down, the man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, and if ye do whatsoever I command. And what is Jesus going to do? Lay down his life. And not only that, what's going to also happen to most of the apostles and the disciples in that generation? They are going to lay down their life for the truth of the gospel and in which the vast majority of them would die at the hands of the Jewish oligarchs, the theocracy, the cult, the dictatorship, the theocratic dictatorship that controlled the people's lives along with the helping hand of the Roman Empire. Henceforth I call you not servants, for servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. And he certainly did do that, and especially when you look at the Dalva Discourses and what was ex expected to happen including the second coming in their generation. And Jesus made that very clear. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordain you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. 
These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, my apostles and disciples, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Why? Because they're following his teachings instead of the teachings of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the elders and scribes, the synagogue of Satan. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own, his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If ye have, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And Jesus explained that in detail in his all the discourses. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, um, and Luke uh, 17 and 21 and also Matthew 10 okay if okay, blah, 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 blah. so I'll just go back to this this reminder if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. If you're wondering why you're having so much issues with people, now you've started getting a clear reason why. Remember, the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If he, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you, my apostles and disciples. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep your yours also. But all things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I say, if I had not done, if I had not done among them the works which none other men did, man did, they had not, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in, the, in their law. They hated me without cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. <clears throat> Which is not you and I. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Because what they be doing the will of the theocratic dictatorship that they are under, and their neighbors, and the, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the scribes and the elders of the synagogue of Satan. So these things will they do unto you. Because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, my apostles and disciples, I'm standing, talking to you directly. That when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. So these guys, a lot of these guys are going to be 
tortured and brutalized and imprisoned and killed and etc 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 and mocked and treated terribly by fellow Jews but he says you know you just persevere to the end basically to your last drop of blood you stop your last breath and there's the pearl great price was eternal and the presence of God in New Jerusalem and these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you but now I go my way to him that sent me none of you asked asketh me whither goest thou but because I have said these things unto you sorrow have filled your heart nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you the Spirit of God will not come unto you and they will not be walking vessels of God walking temples of God but if I depart I will send him unto you and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and in of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of the world is judged so the prince of the world some would say is Satan falsely would say is Lucifer Satan and Lucifer are not the same thing sorry to disappoint you there and I'm going to tell you something too there's an awful lot of people who are involved in this Luciferian religion at the top and the Roman Empire and the spirits and entities that they are dealing with are deceiving them as well they are totally convinced that they're dealing with some entity called Lucifer and they have seen things but that well it was put it this way either the Bible was wrong or they're right or they're wrong and the Bible's right when we look at the, the byproduct of fruits so set them free set you free type of thing you reveal the truth if you look at Luciferians and what they really attribute to this world compared to what the Bible and the truth and and the comfort and hope that the words and the 66 books of the Bible offer there is really no comparison of course most people have never given the Spirit of God any opportunity or chance to actually do that do you notice that it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of desire to make that happen actually and a lot of most people it's, it's and usually for us I know for myself I had to go through an immense amount of suffering before I would even what desire it the little did I do desire it's one of the reasons why I keep recording and reading the Bible and putting it out there is because it gives me peace in my soul with all the the darkness and deception and lies and confusion all around me whether it's in the spiritual realm or in the physical realm here or that place in between it's just I don't find much comfort outside of Jesus I certainly don't find any comfort out of people who falsely call me buddy or friend who really are just looking for somebody to follow them that they can feel superior or a big shot you know what I mean ego stroke I don't really need the ego stroke anymore I'm actually dealing with it now it's just once another layer of judgmentalness coming from the, whether it's the bots the trolls the actual real people I'm trying to remind myself over and over again that it really doesn't matter and I don't even know why I even bother interacting with anybody I should just share it those who are interested will hear it and those that don't uh, I don't have any desire won't hear it and just move it away hopefully after a while but there's times you know when I get really passionate about things what's going on or what I find and what I've seen 
and I want to um but I realize oh, it's pointless man it's really pointless it's pointless in the point of having any kind of serious conversation or debate via typing on Facebook emails a comment section on YouTube or in bit shoot etc it really is only because it's a waste of energy on my part and your part and we're not really connecting real connection is face to face and have a conversation and looking at the words on, on the Bible it's, it's you know when it comes to say the spiritual realm and really revealing what's going on in, in the sky and in the stars and people act like oh it's no big deal and I, it's amazing they don't do nothing new here's this crap oh my gosh the stuff that they say and it's got to be spiritual because I'm just listening to it. if it wasn't new of having filming spirits in the stars why aren't you doing it and why aren't your buddies doing it you Gaia freaks and all that you're not doing it why is that because you're not really led by the Spirit of God you're led by other things that don't want you to know the truth why aren't you filming amazing images of spirits in the sky why aren't you doing that the, you know you guys are tromping around and and, and and you know and there's I do believe there are servants of God are meant to be tromping around in the woods and the marshes and everything to show that these spirit realm and the stuff of that but for the most part people are just trying to look and they get like they get if this stuff takes you away from God and draws you back into the world it's not good stuff it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter what it is if it causes a huge gap or divide between you and the Spirit of God, and you'll know when you have the Spirit of God. He's not going to be walking around these entities and going, la di da di da they're my friends, and all that. You know, that's not what's going to be happening. They, they are, have recognized you and have been recognizing you all along. It's just now you are recognizing them, and now this is an issue for them. You don't understand that. I can, I can, you don't realize how many people whose lives have been destroyed bigfooting. At first, and maybe for a year or two, it's like, wow, new friends, new insights, and all that kind of stuff. But it's just like everything, like, you know, I like the Gaia movement. The Gaia movement, right? I was in that movement 30 years ago, people. I'm 54 years old. I want to tell you something. I was one of the, the that original group of people that, or that that wasn't necessarily the original one, but that big push that was on us culturally in the United States of America in the 90s, in which tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, if, if not a, more than that, maybe even a million plus people got wrapped up in this whole our education bullshit about environmental science and management. The, going to change the world you know what I mean all these different skills whether it was wastewater management and hydrology or dealing with the nuclear energy and you know, getting all these certificates and all this kind of stuff waste hazard management industrial processes and etc and all this other minimized waste and all that kind of stuff I, I was head into it over my head that was my whole life in fact it got to a point where I when I finally really realized how corrupt that whole system was I started to, to just do the greenscaping thing and try to convince developers to, to preserve as much parcel of a land as possible Now, in which I had great success in proving that it, they could make money and, you know, m making bogs that weren't there or, or, or me wildflower meadows or nature trails, boardwalks, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff that, to make it you know, appealing to the people who were living there, whether it was in whatever. 
But the fact of the matter is they didn't want anything to do with it. The, the, the developers didn't want anything to do it. And there was a reason for it. And there was a push going on back then that they didn't want anything to do with it. And by 2009 there, or, or 2008 and 7, and actually the, the housing bubble and crash actually started way back in 2000, 2001. At the same time when I started to go on my own and um, just say, you know, screw this, and, you know, I'm in debt up to my ass and I'm never going to have a decent job. I'm always going to work for these environmental consulting firms and associates getting patents and basically lying about this, the soil sampling and the water sampling and et cetera, et cetera, just fudging the numbers making sure that the endless work is provided and endless money is provided for the boss but the ground groundwater never got clean the super funds never really got clean etc 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 it was just a bunch of ego stroking nonsense Dealing with people from the EPA and realize how, and I know some, I mean, with the school or something, and what pricks they were, absolute pricks, lying pricks. They had no, they didn't care about anything, and not anybody cared about anything at the end of the day. So I decided, you know what? I cared about some, I care about the environment, I cared about the nature, I cared about God's creation. How can I help how can, in the middle? There's no middle ground in any of this. Where am I going with all this? So my only oh yeah, my point is this Gaia thing. So I was into this, and it was part of the even part of the higher education back then in college and university. And you and looking back retrospect, you know a lot of this Gaia movement and all this stuff, this New Age movement, is all part of the Freemasons, and it's all part of the government. And it's all about the steering the masses and getting them into as many cults and divided as possible. Never to ever having a true relationship with God. And I hear these, you know, here's the thing. A sane individual, a person that's really balanced, can learn from whoever, whatever their bent is. I have learned from Christians, New Agers, Satanists atheists etc for the most part most of it was worthless but those gems of truth I hold on to they help build my world view and what I find very profound that the new agers and the occultists and these people that are in all these different whether it was witchcraft and wicca and sorcery are if not just as judgmental or more judgmental than Bigfooters themselves or Christians, which is, says a lot. But it's not just because they're witches and because it's because they're human beings. And human beings by nature, we're awful, judgmental, nasty, self-centered creatures. And as long as everyone thinks we look beautiful and we, they listen to us and all the crap that comes out of our mouths, that's okay. I don't find too many people that really go and pursue the will of God. And I don't. I find people over and over again, whether it's the Eastern religions, but Buddhism, Confucianism, um, Hinduism, and all the other isms, for that matter, East and West, as they collide and mesh and they create their trying to figure out their state religion and how they're going to control the masses of their endless cults. Very few people are really interested at all in having a personal relationship with the true and living God. In fact, I don't think most people even believe who are Christians and the true and living God. They regurgitate it, they claim it. But when it comes to the push and shove, how many people are willing to follow him and lose everything in order to do that? You now most people think, oh, you need to give all your money to the poor and do all this kind of stuff. Let me reassure you something. You follow the, the Lord of Spirits, the creator of all things. He's going to make a giant... He's going to create a giant gulf, a wedge between you and the world. 
And don't you worry. You'll lose the things of this world to begin with. You don't need to go and give away your millions to the poor and all that kind of stuff because things are going to happen already. And it will be in process. And as long as you value that money more than God and you're one of his, these are going to cause great havoc in your life. Many times it's not as people assume it to be. Most people think, oh no, I'm going to be in the poor house and out on the street. But many times these people, because they love me money more than God and there's got an issue with wealth and all that, become more wealthier and become more ensnared and trapped and burdened by it. Why? And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying money in itself is evil. It's the love of money that's the evil. That's the root of all evil. And money itself doesn't have to have talisman turn into a talisman, by the way. It could simply be whatever. A notch on a piece of wood like it was for thousands of years. Or just a plain blank piece of silver. Or a diamond. Or a gem. Or a really cool looking stone. Or shells. I mean, it doesn't matter. What matter it, it's is a form of... What, when we say it's a form of exchange, it has to have... Spongibility is going to be able to fungibility. That's what it is. Fungibility, fungibility, and be able to be used from one group of people to another and be recognized. So when you start seeing dollar bills and everything else with all these occultic symbols, it's because there's rituals, satanic, uh, most of like sorcery and, and and witchcraft involved in all of it. And in the United States of America, it never was and never will be. I hear people over and over again that it's a Christian nation. But the more you study about it, it never was a Christian nation. It had Christians in it. I mean, it's fascinating. The greatest example is this Jamestown and the witch trials. The Salem, not James, the Salem witch trials. The people that were tortured and killed were not the ones who admitted they were witches. They're the ones who denied they were witches and confessed Jesus. But you're not allowed to talk about that. Because that's not useful for the official narrative. Because it's very useful for the ruling elite in the Roman Empire, Empire which practiced all sorts of like witchcraft and sorcery and um, you know, interacting with these spirits that we call Bigfoot. Sasquatch and all the entities along with it, the ones that are in the stars and in the sun and sky and in the ground. They're more than just elemental spirits. But the people in their foolishness and because they don't have a very depth understanding, they might have names for some of these things and spells and rituals to draw them out. But quite frankly, I know a better way to draw them out. And you don't have to do any of that jack crap. I know exactly how to draw them out. You know how you draw them out? It's the same way that happens in between human beings. You start big talking about Jesus and see how the spirits inside each and every one's meat suits get all crazed up. You want to go and really have some interaction with these things? start talking about Jesus I'm not kidding go in the woods go out in the sky or look up in the sky and start talking about Jesus glorifying Jesus and see how things go crazy up there in the sky in the edge of the woods and etc I'm dead serious now here's the fun thing about it these, these things will figure out real fast whether or not you believe in him or not and if you don't believe in him, it's going to come back to hit you like a ton of bricks. You think you're smart and you're clever and you're going to come back and you're going to have you, your life turn upside down. And they're going to be doing it because they realize that you are nothing but a fake and a phony. 
and so will God. Now, if you really do believe in Jesus and you talk about these things about Jesus, uh, yeah, they're going to go like, "Whoa, this, this there's actually a human being that actually believes in Jesus." And they mostly just talk about he actually believes in them. They'll, they'll keep back. They'll keep around you, though. Don't get, don't get me wrong. They're waiting for that moment. You fail. You, you fall. And so is the Spirit of God. And so is everyone else. And there's times you will. And there's times you, you won't. If you run hands, they'll maintain you to the end. To the bitter end. You, you, you cross, you will fare. But most of these things aren't afraid of you because you, you don't got any real power. You don't need anything. You don't have a real authority. And they, th and they think you're a joke. And they couldn't wait. I mean, so you're going to invite them into you? While they spend most of the time inside the trees and in the, the, the veins and the capillaries of the trees and of the plants and in the, and, and, and the root system and the hairs, of the, the root hairs, and in the water and in the soil and in the air... They don't like dry things. They don't like dry areas. You go in a desert, you won't see too many spirits. Unless there's humidity in it, which is rare in a desert. But where there's any kind of humidity in the atmosphere and on the ground, you're going to see a lot of spirits. Because they like this, the humidity. And I, yes, a lot of them are, looks like, looks like to me, are a byproduct of uh, the fallen angels and, and women, which they still do to this day. Women still, every single culture on earth to this day still has subcultures and groups who women and men who marry themselves off to these spirits. They give themselves, hand themselves over to these spirits in order to get power. And they give you a clear understanding how these Nephilim were created. Back then, because nothing's changed under the sun, folks. People think Christians, people who really believe in Jesus are crazy. <sighs> Be around people that are like, you've really been pushing all the sorcery and witchcraft and, you know, the stuff like uh, intention, the law of intention and and uh, oh god the secret and all this other stuff by the way i was a part of all that stuff 20 years ago it led to destruction a dead end for me actually it led me to jesus but in the process these spirits which i didn't know they were spirits back then only a few actually knew were using these things just to, for themselves to gain power at the expense of others the number of people that are destroyed, lives destroyed by the New Age movement, the Gaia movement, and all this, is profound. And when you realize that all these things are also state-funded and created cults and movements that do not come from organic beginnings, and it pisses people off because everyone wants to think they're Mr. Know-it-all. And listen... It's natural to get offended. It's naturally to get your, your feathers all ruffled and out of place. And it happens to me all the time, too. But, you know, if it's something that's worthwhile, you'll step back and say, Is it true? Maybe I should challenge what I'm hearing, what I'm believing. And if what I'm challenging, and it takes more than a night, or, me just, or just thinking, you know, for a moment, or listening to somebody like me, you're going to have to do it. And you're going to find that the Gaia movement and all these other movements cannot sustain themselves. They cannot last. They won't last. They can't last because they're not designed to last. What they're designed is to keep evil divided and conquered. Just like a religion of the religion of Christianity. Now, if you really read the Bible for what it says in New Testament, Jesus freed all mankind from religion. There's only one high priest. There's only one high priest. It's Jesus. There's no need for all the rest of this stuff. If everyone were to talk that way and treat each other that way and reverence God for what he said and did 
and not be ashamed of what he said and did. And stop using religion as some way of to control and manipulate other people and your environment and yourself. But actually, the only reason you should get together as Christians is to partake of the Lord's Supper and, and to celebrate God for what he said and did. Not to hand over a whole bunch of stuff to somebody and their brick and mortar and their air conditions and their, their vacations and their house payments and all that. And if you say, well, look at all the stuff that the pastor does. The pastor does jack shit when you really think about it. Just as the Pope jacks do jack shit. Every single of those things those guys do. The world will still move on if they never existed. Just as every druid priest and every freaking... Uh, bishop of myth Mithraism and etc etc if they're all gone the world will still move on they will be replaced by other cults and other religions and all other gurus and the cults and these these gurus come in different forms and one of the most the modern day cult of all is scientism falsely called where people claim that they are applying the scientific principles of the scientific method in their research and whatever they're doing only to find out with a little bit of effort that they're not doing any of that they're just pushing an agenda and then look at me i'm one of the guys now i'm one of the gals look at i'm a i'm desired i'm wanted i i'm part of a group not part of god part of a group and there's your snare and there lie in lie ends your snare if you're going to pursue the truth, you got to be willing to have everybody hate you in order to find that truth. To pursue the way and the truth, you got to be willing to be hated as the God of this world, the Lord of all spirits, is hated. Because that's the only way you're going to find it. And you say, oh yeah, Mike, yeah, yeah. Well, prove me wrong. And then come back to me when you've not proven me wrong and say, you know, you know, you know, you know, pat me on the shoulder and say, Mike, good job. And praise God. And all glory goes to the Lord of all spirits, and not to Michael Adams, and not to you, and not to anybody else. Not to no Pope, not to Archbishop, not to any institution, not any uh, knights of this and knights of that. No wizard this and wizard. People are so desperate to have an identity. That they still end up like children in the sandbox. Thinking that there's big shots when you're not. I know I'm not a big shot. I am nothing. And that's a good place to be. And I know that you and no other man or woman can actually rise me above what I am. You could give me all the money in the world, and you give me the nicest home, and all the accolades, and a hot uh, harem of hot chicks, and all this kind of stuff. And you know what? My life would end up like what Solomon's. What? A disaster? A demon possessed from here to head to toe? The only reason anybody wanted you in their life is because. What they could get out of you, materialize. And in the end, you just act like dumb animals, squirting your seed all over the place, your juices and fluids all over the place, and look at me, this is what I've done. Or it gets even worse, and you end up like this person, and you're like playing with people's fecal matter and their butts. And I mean that. Well, that's a form of love. There's that's no form of love. It doesn't take a genius to figure it's not a form of love. It's a form of control. To make you feel, but even more important, the things that are inside you feel good for a moment. How many times have you ever had sex with somebody or thought about having sex with somebody and it was all about domination and darkness and just, instead, it's not about love. It's about the act of sexual domination over another person and making them do your will and, and you and, and you're like where are all those thoughts and where are those other images and those dark images that come along with it and those things that look like demons and like devils and, but they don't quite look like the things that the Carmel Catholic Church are saying but they're in my head and I see them in my head when I'm sleeping at night and I have a hard time sleeping and you know damn well what I'm talking about 
the only way that the spirit man, the spirit woman is going to survive this place is having the spirit of God in you, a bit of heaven in you, in your meat suit. This is the only way it's going to survive. It has nothing to do with religion. You can throw out every damn religion there is. It's always been a snare and a trap to keep men, to keep you from that personal relationship with God. As long as you allow men to be the middlemen and the contract between men and God, the man and woman, the person, the soul, the spirit, and God, guess what happens? You get tossed to and fro and you're going, oh, there's a big fit over there and there's a big, oh my gosh, there's an ape man and he's coming down and he's got his nest and all this. And they'll play all these games on you. They love fooling you. They love tricking you. They love leading you. As long as you don't put any time in and have any kind of relationship with God, they will lead you here, there, and everywhere. Perfect. And more important, if you spend all your attention on them, oh yeah. And the moment you open that door, which most people do when Bigfoot research and dogman research and did, you know, ghost hunting and all this stuff is, there's a moment that you, that you open that door, now you become that open vessel for them. And the number of people that are infested with legions of these things. And let's understand these spirits manifest in different sizes and shapes and everything most of them are just little orbs and look like dust floating in the air and they just enter into you you invite them there's no defense i'm gonna get back into this reading of this stuff uh and uh showing in my next recording how clearly quote unquote Bigfoot and Dogma, these entities that we call Bigfoot and Dogma, are always the detachments, the totems. How they're hooked together with uh, small spirits. All working in tandem and, and and to steal, kill, and destroy. If it's not going to be you, it's going to be that damn tree. The number of dead trees associated with these things is amazing. But you don't think about oh, it's tree structures. Wow. And look at that. They make these teepees. And they make this and that. No, no. It's got these great signs and symbols and all this kind of stuff. And it, all it means is that they are killing off these trees. That's what it means. If you have the eyes to see. But man, they make these crazy nests and these crazy, you know, it's tree structures. And all that. Yeah, it's crazy. You notice that? How crazy it is? How chaotic it is? How irrational it is, how it doesn't work with the natural world properly. They do those trees, and if they could, they'll do it to you. What do you think inspires a whole world, a whole realm of people to believe in an imaginary boogie bug? That's never been isolated, quantified, or found, or seen, or anything. Do you realize that? Not my opinion. It's uh, it's written in stone. In fact, the thing that starts with a V has never been seen. Everything else has been disappeared. All of a sudden, the V has taken its place. V for victory, right? Vendetta. And the poisonous cup and the poignard and how that... Well, it's led to the murder and maiming and death of not just the tens of millions, hundreds of millions this past two years, the latest round of it, but probably billions of people. And it's been going on. I mean, Ignatius, like all of us, talking about how he learned about it from the Indians in India. And that priestcraft over there. When I say priestcraft, it's the same thing as a priest class. The proper term is priestcraft, like witchcraft, priestcraft. <clears throat> and war. And all these 
a lot of rituals that have just been changed through time as the populace got more you know it was you know hey cut all this heart and put it there on that step of that ziggurat yeah a whole bunch of them tens of thousands of them ah who was satisfied it wasn't the sun god that's for sure oh by the way let's don't forget something there is one entity that was conquered and thrown in a lake of fire and he's still there I think and he's going to be there along with a lot of other things that went along with him so what is this sun god that they talk about and what are the other things why are they manifesting I mean it goes on and on and on but I just want you to know something you think you got it figured out you think you're smart you hang out with your your, your friends as your new friends in the internet world regurgitating the same old crap that everyone else is doing you're just setting yourself up for a lot of pain a lot of pain now a few people on the top are going to benefit in particular the government and those that are running a lot of these psyops and a lot of these psyops are, are being run and managed and they're calling them Bigfoot organizations where they're you know pushing some imaginary tale about some monkey or ape or primate humanoid except I'm going to tell you something amazingly until this past century or actually in the past what 70 100 years when they started working on a new narrative for all this as it destroyed the Native American cultures and that towards the end of the Indian Wars they didn't want people to remember what was going on in the past and the history of our past. Not only just the Native Americans, but also Natives and indigenous populations throughout the world. Everybody knew, including the Vatican knew, in their own frickin' mural there on the Sistine Chapel. The Last Judgment. They knew. They've always known. They've been interacting with these things that some people call their friend and brothers of people for thousands of years and they've known all along they weren't primates or monkeys but amazingly in 2022 there's a whole group of people that, that think there's a possibility or that it is where for for, from thousands and thousands of cultures and from generations and I've, I've been warning us and telling us they aren't flesh and blood animals they can manifest at certain times and then the, they can have almost like a flesh like form depending on the blood rituals and the sacrifices that were done they'll come up They'll come, they'll pop up in your little rooms and your little this and that or in the middle of Northern California. There's a lot of questions to be asked and some intelligent questions need to be asked. The first intelligent question is not so much as whether Patty is a flesh and blood being or spirit. Why did it happen? Around, when did the ritual when did it happen why did it happen and why was it pushed on the television all over the country and the world and in the movie theaters because the government which means to govern your mind which is an apparatus of the ruling oligarchs who practice sorcery and divination and witchcraft and necromancy and all those stuff why did they push that on us and keep pushing that on us and have for 55 years and yet you and I and no one's ever found that elusive Bigfoot a lot of us have seen him I know I have I don't give a shit if anybody else thinks that I have or not I could give two craps I know exactly what I've gone through That's because they're not these amazingly 
apex apex predator of flesh and blood things and those who've been doing this for any length of time know that and many of these guys have the backgrounds and military and intel psychological operations whether within the military for the government or private contractors and are still pushing this nonsense if you're ever going to listen to them or some Native American elder in, in Canada that is not looking for a dime or any recognition for what's going on I'll take the Native American elder whether shaman or not and when they say yeah it's a spirit now leave me alone I know they're not telling me the truth they're not asking for money for recognition selling books they just want to tell the truth many times you just want to tell the truth just you go away you know why they know you'll go away think about it why would you go away what would happen to the Bigfoot community the cryptid community if it really was about spirits and you know, it goes back to back to unclean spirits and demons and devils and etc oh yeah mm-hmm and then the truth about a lot of that would start to be revealed for where it really is as far as the movements again and it's through the movements that they create that corrupt the truth over and over and over to the point you could present the truth into somebody the plain unadulterated truth and their brains would be so cluttered with BS they would not be able to recognize that their life depended upon it same thing goes on with this Bible the Bible makes it very clear what happened what were the expectations of God the Son of God the Son of Man Lord God even Satan recognized him as Lord God Jesus and his apostles what they expected and what was supposed to expect it to happen in their generation and for hundreds of years if not longer maybe even 2,000 years depending if you really believe the timelines from people that lie to you about everything else they've been pushing a false narrative and in order to control you and divide you and when you come to the truth about things and you start to share the truth with people you know what happens to you and I'm gonna keep telling you this because you must understand this because either you really are a lover of the truth or you're a lover of your own popularity which is really shallow and stupid and empty the truth the way the truth in life either you love and which will lead you to Lord of all spirits and God And the realization that there's the love of this world and there's love of God and there's the dividing line in all of humanity. And every culture where that individual started to pursue the love of God has without exception been driven out an outcast the edge of the for the, of the tribe always it has to be there's no hope there's no other listen if you stay stuck with the group you're going to be here uh, 20 different things about uh, that are all wrong Abraham we had to be he had to listen to God and leave Ur in fact he wanted to leave Ur and he went out into the, the and two the wilderness with his hot wife Sarah in which for almost a hundred years he had romping sex with her and never had any baby but made a lot of money until it was time to have that baby and fighting all sorts of things out there and people walk this world like Abraham not because you want to be a judo christian or a jew or a christian 
but because you want to be a temple for the Lord of all spirits because if you don't want to be that then something else is going to choose you for their temple do you understand that you are the temple it always was that to begin with but people are not prepared to freaking deal with the truth people are not prepared to deal with what it means to follow the way the truth and life and to follow God they'll play religion until they're blue in the face and have the endless shallow empty arguments about this that and the other thinking they're so damn clever and they outsmarted God and the reality of this creation and, the, and, and uh, everyone else which is so smart and you know what? They'll get their little trinkets and their 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 uh, smit me ten years, twenty years of recognition and fame. Maybe they'll have and they'll, and they'll have just enough to get by as they go from day to day in their tomb, in their ivory tower, looking into what the glass ceiling tower, right? Looking what into the, uh, the sky, the entity spirits been. Think about what I'm saying, because I'm telling you a lot there, and I know it's a lot. You say, oh, this is all common sense. And you recognize, you do that? Well, how come the people don't talk common sense? Why do we always have to play games with each other? Yeah, I'm speaking common sense, and you know what? Just imagine if there was a hundred of us got together and spoke common sense. Instead of playing games, but it always ends up the same way. There's always the usurpers, and they're always going to usurp every group, so you can't have that. You have to make a decision do you follow God, the creator of all things, the Lord of all spirits, or do you follow His creation? We all get what we desire in the end. The problem is, for the most part, we don't desire what the outcome is. It's like kicking, kicking, screaming little kids. If you ever did play in a sandbox, most of you never even played in a sandbox. It's just figured a speech for you. But given the chance, think about who you really are. Because you're not much different than that kid at 5 or 10 or 15. Are you? The only thing most likely has happened is that you've been more successful and more uh, uh, developed more skills in BSing yourself and others to get through another day. <laughs>